Thanks for choosing RTV News. I am Isabel Massos that are now topping our edition today. Residents appreciate the government of Rwanda for fostering religious freedom. Meanwhile, the recent general population census revealed that the majority of Rwandans belong to various religious affiliations. However, there are some of those who do not subscribe to any religion. We have Olive Wontete bringing us this report. 402,517 Rwandans, which equals to 3% of all Rwandans, are people with no religion, according to the recent findings of the general population census. Dr. Wajir Sharusa, an expert in economy, is among those with no religion. He says that as time goes by, it may be possible that the number of religious people will decrease. I am a Dini and Yaji Kungufu. Others are the religions were imposed by colonialists. We are forced to them. Then you understand that when you are forced to do something, it's very hard to sustain in it. Thereafter, they established the religious freedom, which influenced those who were forced to join it, to drop out easily. John Mugawo, an analyst and an expert in diplomacy, is often heard in discussions in media about what he calls heresy on beliefs. According to him, he believes in God, but he does not belong to any religion. No, I'm no longer a believer. I dropped out from it. All those were because of colonialism, and we believed by force, baptized by force, and we were raised from that kind of lie, which I all left behind. According to Kalini Jawajande, a journalist, he says that he's not ashamed of the fact that he has no religion because he believes that those who are religious are no better than him. No. I don't have any religion because I don't want it just. Because none of those with the religion revealed to me any benefit that is greater than what I have to the point where I think that I need it in my life. Apart from those who have no religion, the fifth population and housing census revealed that more than 2,000 people are members of the traditional religion. Followers of different religions appreciate that in Rwanda there is religious freedom. I'm happy of the fact that every Rwandan has the right to belong to whatever religion they choose because we don't have the same belief and when every person lives according to what they believe it is easier for them and they also feel free and accept and receive the preachings that they are taught. When I see happy people in the Catholic Church or in other various religions I take it as something good and I thank this government that provides us with freedom. Both those who have religion and those with no religion all emphasizes that living in harmony and unity is what matters. The 2022 general population census showed that out of 13,246,394 Rwandans, more than 5 million are Catholics, which equals 39.9%, while 2,820,813 are from Adepair, which equals 21.3%. Protestants are 1,928,741, which equals to 14.6%. Adventists are 1,612,482, which equals to 12.2%, while other Christians are 550,174, which equals to 4.2%. Muslims are 265,317, which equals to 2%, while Jehovah's Witness are 93,131, which equals to 0.7%. Meanwhile, those not stated are 17,785, which equals to 0.1% of all Rwandans. Olive Nete, RTV News. Thank you, Olive. Now, on Saturday the 4th, the Center for Cultural Promotion was launched in Canada, and the all-encompassing initiative aims to promote the Rwandan culture through language and arts. Now, the High Commissioner of Rwanda to Canada, Honorable Ambassador Prosper Hijiro, now joins me to shed a little bit more light on this ambassador. Thank you so much for making the time to talk to me. Thank you. Uh, good evening and thank you for inviting me. A pleasure. Ambassador, now I know at Umushikirano, of course, uh, culture was quite central to some of the conversations and making sure we preserve it and uh, we hone in when it comes to our identity. Was this part of the inspiration for the launch of the center? Oh, well, uh, it's true that um, uh, uh, culture and its promotion is uh, a recurrent uh, issue that comes out during Mushichirano and uh, uh, the last Mushichirano uh, actually uh, addressed that this issue. But uh, 
This cultural center uh, that has been uh, launched in Ottawa, Canada, uh, actually came out from the needs uh, the community of Rwanda here in the capital city of Ottawa have expressed. Mm. And uh, a group uh, of uh, members of the Rwandan community took the initiative uh, uh, to, to start uh, uh, that center that is going to focus on uh, uh, promoting key aspects of our culture, including the language, Chinyarwanda, and arts, mainly the dances, the songs, Inore, etc. All right, now I, I, I noticed that the use of language and also dance, uh, that is what you're focusing on. Why those two as the drivers specifically? Uh, actually, in the long run, uh, the center will uh, address all the aspects, but uh, uh, the, 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 the promoters uh, made a, a survey uh, and realized that uh, most of those members of the community uh, 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 want to start with uh, learning in Rwanda, mm -hmm. uh, learning how to, to practice uh, uh, traditional dances, uh, uh, both uh, uh, boys and girls. So that is why they, they have uh, uh, decided to start with. Uh, but also there is that uh, aspect of being pragmatic and realistic uh, 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 starting by uh, uh, those uh, uh, issues that are, are more pressing mm. for the community. Mm -hmm. And you're now open in Utah, that is uh, uh, in uh, Utah, I beg your pardon, that is where you've started, but do you have plans to expand to some other cities? Uh, actually, there are already some uh, small-scale initiatives, uh, uh, be it individual or from some churches mm. owned by, by, by Rwandans here in Canada. But there are already some initiatives that already are teaching uh, uh, in Rwanda. Uh, but uh, uh, the idea is to have this center uh, being uh, strengthened uh, consolidated the first to make sure it's sustainable mm. uh, so that it can inspire uh, and motivate uh, other Rwandans here in Canada mm -hmm. uh, uh, in different provinces and cities and actually even if it, it can uh, uh, inspire other Rwandans mm -hmm. uh, outside Canada. Yes. Staying uh, true to who you are is, is quite core. Uh, I want to understand some of the challenges Rwandans in Canada face when it comes to staying connected uh, to their own identity and to their own culture and heritage. Well, uh, already in, even in Rwanda, we know that uh, there are some challenges uh, uh, learning in Rwanda and some aspects of our culture. but. When it comes to the, to, to the diaspora, uh, be it in Canada or elsewhere, uh, mm -hmm. uh, it comes with its own challenges now, given that uh, 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 members of the, the diaspora need to, to, to settle in a new society, in a new communities. Uh, Canada is a, a, a big country uh, uh, geographically, so Rwandans are uh, 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 settled uh, and different provinces and cities. So it's not easy to get uh, social events uh, where one can connect and yes. speak in Rwanda or practice dances. Correct. But uh, mm. uh, 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 it's obvious that the challenge uh, uh, of time as well, because people are very busy. Mm. Uh, some have maybe two shifts mm. uh, per day. So it's not easy because most of the, 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 the culture is learned uh, through uh, social connections uh, and social events where people can connect and interact. So those are the main challenges, but uh, with technology, with uh, working in weekends, mm -hmm. uh, that is how the, this initiative will be uh, promoted and improved. All right. Now, before I let you go, uh, how has the Rwandan community in Canada received the launch of the center? 
Uh, actually, it was uh, an, init an initiative by the community. The embassy came in just to, to support the idea, uh, maybe to do some advocacy, mm -hmm. uh, to give some guidance. Mm -hmm. So it's mainly an initiative from the community. So, uh, and people are participating financially. Mm -hmm. They agreed to bring in their children. Yes. So, and that gives it uh, actually uh, 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 much success because we believe it will be more sustainable. Yes, absolutely. Well, we love seeing what you're doing, and I hope that we will talk sometime in the future and you can keep us updated on what's going on. Thank you so much, Ambassador, for talking to us. Thank you. All right, and that is the High Commissioner of Rwanda to Canada, Honorable Ambassador Prosper Hijiro. We now continue with more RTV news. Some of the residents of Kigali City have expressed concern over the wave of random robberies blowing through the city of Kigali day and night. They have called on authorities to take action. Take a look. According to Kigali residents, the problem is evident in different parts of the city, including Mohima sector in Nyarujanje district, even during broad daylight. They are calling on authorities to take necessary measures. The other day, I was taking someone from Jisosi to Nyamirambo, and they stole my phone and ran off. The problem we have, they arrest them and they come back and do the same. We are tired of that. The executive secretary of Mohima, Mokando Regress, says that the issue was raised. They are going to intensify efforts to put a stop to the problem. We arrest them, but we also decided to send them for rehabilitation so that they can be reintegrated back into the society. Rwanda National Police spokesperson CP John Bosco Cabera says that the police is ready to apprehend the robbers as soon as they get the relevant information. What we do is whoever arrested, we do a background check to see if it's a first offense or not. But we discourage the acts. We do follow up. When we get the information, sometimes we parade them. Other times, we don't. But when we get the information, we act on it. We encourage everyone to call 112, the police contact line, with information. Kigali City Administration says that it has eliminated some of the places where the thieves used to hide from authorities. They've also increased patrols and the number of security guards during day and night. Now moving on in Bujesera district, the area of land that is cultivated in 2023 agricultural season A, a half of the harvest expected was actually affected by drought. However, the government of Rwanda provided food to more than 12,000 families. Olivon Tete has more. These farmers indicate that while they just started to plant their crops in the 2023 season A, there were sunny seasons which damaged crops and it negatively affected them. I cultivated on two hectares, but I only harvested two tons, while I was supposed to harvest five tons. The measures taken is that we are currently recultivating and we are about to be done, and we shall sow soybeans on this area. We cultivated maize on a hectare, and we also cultivated bean seeds from rub on a hectare. But we harvested that six kilograms of beans on that hectare. It means that crops were damaged because of the dry season. Sinjeni Wajan Damasen, in charge of agriculture activities in Wijesara district, says that the expected yield has drastically reduced, causing some of the residents to be deprived of food and were supported by the government. We cultivated crops on an area of 33,000 hectares on dry lands, but we provided generators used in irrigation. Two people cultivating on 5,000 hectares of the 33,000. This means that the majority of farmers are not even close to swamps which damage their crops. We received a productivity of 22,000 tons, which is a half of that we usually produce. We usually produce 45,000 tons. The only productivity that wasn't damaged is that of the rice, because we cultivate in swamps, and also cassava, because 
suppose they usually bear drought seasons and we harvested like 90% of it. But with beans, the productivity was less than 15%. With maize, we received a productivity of between 40 to 45%. In discussions that brought together different institutions in Wijisara district, including farmers, breeders and representatives of agriculture, they reiterated on the fact that they have established measures to prevent drought in this agriculture season B of 2023. We decided that we are going to work together with residents in this upcoming agriculture season, and we are also going to start cultivating a bit early and do it before rainy seasons, because according to the meteorology, they say that rainy seasons may start from the 6th. According to Sende Norbert from the Rwanda Agricultural Board, the is a station. They are cooperating with farmers to close the gap of low productivity that was caused by climate change in the recent agriculture season C of 2022. We must cultivate on every land so that we may close the gaps that were noticed in the first season and also want to use various things to increase the productivity. Currently, 90% of the residents have registered on the list of people who want manure and improved seeds. We are also doing our best so that this season B, we can prepare fields before, so that in places with the rainy season, we may start planting. <laughs> In the 2023 agricultural season A, there were more than 30,000 hectares of land cultivated in this district, which were planted with corn, soybeans, beans, rice, and cassava, and were expected to yield more than 44,000 tons, but half of them was damaged. Low-income families, amounting to 12,000 people, were supported by the government, where they received 1,232 tons of corn and beans. Olive Nete, RTV News. Thank you, Olive. We now go to health matters. Health experts have expressed concern over the rise in obesity cases, a non-communicable disease contributing 44% of deaths in the country and billions globally. Uh, we go to Adam Squizera for this report. Wamizi Freelance says that in the last four years, she has managed to lose more than 25 kilograms after being repeatedly advised that she might suffer one of the non-communicable diseases. And uh, I met someone, he was sick, mentally sick, at the marketplace and he told me, Mom, you are extremely fat and guess what, tomorrow is New Year, so if you don't resolve to lose weight, believe me, you're going to die. So that was my starting point. I told myself, if someone with mental health issues can boldly advise me, who am I not to hearken to his advice? So that's how I started. I started with sports, I started eating healthy, I tried my level best and uh, together with the trial, things started happening progressively, slowly, slowly. So after my positive result, though I am still on the way, I started to attract my friends, my friends, my neighbors, those at my workplace. They started coming to me, asking me exactly what I put to work. So we started, we were a few, we started five, five came to 10, one told the other, the other told the other, and that's how the good news of Slim and Fit spread. On Sunday's mass sport activity, various participants, including foreigners, explained their roles in preventing their non-communicable diseases, including obesity. So it is an issue of the West, but slowly it's crapping towards um, um, low-income countries and it's making its way very fast. And it's climbing its way together with all the communicable diseases which are already here, TB, malaria, diarrhea, you name it. Then you put the NCDs on top of that. We need to do preventive rather than treatment and we, do, we have to do from the scratch in terms of changing our lifestyle, changing the way we eat, changing the way we think, stuff like that. We do less activity and we take processed foods like burgers, chips, fried items which we, we never used to do previously. So we need to add more of vegetables, fruits and uh, carbohydrates, proteins, everything in a balanced diet. We need to add more of vegetables, fruits and uh, carbohydrates, proteins, everything in a balanced diet. So it should be balanced diet. We should not take a few things more and few things less. That is what causing all these diseases. That is also one of the major causes of obesity, as explained by nutritionist Anastasi Mukakayumba. Kurya ibishyimbo ukabuhiramo imboga, ugashyiramo amavuta, ukarya ikijumba, 
Eating beans, vegetables, oil and sweet potatoes, that's a balanced diet. And you can also change the diet by switching to rice, peas and cassava leaves. It's a full diet which everyone can afford. Minister of Health, Dr. Sabine Sanzimana, knows that the problem of obesity has doubled in the last two years. A person who sits for eight hours per day is likely to face less than communicable diseases and death at the rate of 50%. It doubles than that one who sits and crawls around for like 20 minutes. As we carried on a survey to know which type of food people eat, to either know how many people eat vegetables, as well as told us that they eat vegetables once a week while they have them near. And we find that what they eat is among those poisonous meals, which brings all those issues. Then we urge you to prevent them at an early stage. Globally, more than 1 billion people suffer obesity and their concerns that by 2035, half of the population will be obese. Dr. Gitinje Gitahi, Chief Executive Officer of the AMREF Health Africa, believes that obesity is an African problem which should be solved by Africans themselves. It is a big issue. We have seen obesity rise significantly. We know and we believe that in another 10 years, more than 50% of people in Africa will be either obese or overweight. That is a big problem because it presents the problem of rising non-communicable diseases because the obesity comes uh, heart disease, comes uh, diabetes and all those things. And these things, as you know, are heavy costs to individuals, to their families, but also to the health system. A obesity leads to diabetes, leads to kidney failure. So you have to build more and more dialysis for people, which we can't afford even now. So Africa must work together to reverse this trend. The 2020 Global Nutrition Report revealed that in Rwanda, 11.5% of women over the age of 18 are obese, while men are 2.5%, and children under the age of 5 are 1.1%. Adam Squizera, RTV News. Thank you, Adams, for that insightful report. A reminder to us to prioritize our health. Now, moving on on Monday, the fifth edition of the Africa Health Agenda International Conference will convene in Rwanda, and the focus will be on mainstreaming climate discourse into health policy conversations. The four-day conference will be attended by 2,000 people, including researchers, politicians, heads of non-governmental organizations, and other experts from African countries. The Minister of Health expounds on the relevance of this conference. Africa contributes only 2% of the research in health, research output to the world. Three, we consume more than 80% of vaccines we produce they are coming from outside our continent. Four, most of these diseases are coming from environment, animals, and people. What we usually call One Health, is the relationship between people, animals, and environment. That is what God has planned us to live uh, in harmony on this earth. Uh, but at some point when the relationship is disrupted, that is how these diseases are coming. And we see that more clearly on this continent than on any other continent. What I'm doing about it is a small uh, portion, if you look at the scientific journey that I mentioned, only 2% of the solution. And yet, we have excellent people, researchers, institutions, as you, as you mentioned. We're just missing a few pieces to come together uh, to find solutions of the big problem that we have here. Because the answer of your problems will not come from far. It has to come from near, from, from your own house, your own uh, region. So that is at least setting the ground of why we are here and why we should uh, see the solutions as something we have in hand. And that's RTV News. Thanks for watching. I am Isabel Masozera.